Welcome back dear students. In today's class, we are going to take up the last part of chapter number 8, Body Movement. In the last class, we have discussed about the skeleton system, which are made up of bones that help in the movement of the body parts. In today's class, we are going to discuss about the muscular system present in the human body and the movement that is caused in certain types of animals and birds. So first, let us take about the muscular system. The muscular system is made up of different types of muscles that are present in different parts of our body. Each and every part used to have two sets of muscles which helps in the movement of different body parts. When one set of muscle contracts, another part of the muscles relax. The contraction and the relaxation of two sets of muscles helps in the movement of the body parts. So let us see how it happens. Let us say this is the portion of the arm. The upper muscles, which is present in our arm, at the upper side, it is known as the bicep. While the muscles that is present at the down portion, it is known as the tricep. When we are going to fold our hand, at the time, the bicep muscles contract while the tricep muscles relax. During the contraction, the muscles of the bicep pull the lower arm portion of our hand. At that time, we used to fold our hand. When there is a need for folding out our hand, at that time, the bicep muscle relax while the tricep muscle contract. During that time, there is a movement of the hand caused and because of that region, our health falls out. So in this way, every part of our body used to have two sets of muscles. When one contract, another set used to relax. The contraction and the relaxation of these two sets of muscles help in the causing of movements of different parts of our body. The muscles that are present in our body, they have only one ability, that is to pull the other parts of the body. They are not able to push or they are not able to do any other type of action. They can only pull the other part of the body. This pulling action of the muscles helps in causing the movement of different body parts. Now, let us see how movement is caused in different types of animals and insects. First, let us take an insect that is earthworm. When you observe the structure of this earthworm, we will be able to see rings of muscles. Their body is made up of armor. Their body is made up of rings or muscles. The contraction and relaxation of these muscles present on their body helps in the movement of their body part. When the other one is going to move forward, the back portion of their body, the muscles present in them, used to remain at a fixed position, while the upper portion used to contract. When they contract, the back side of their body is been pulled forward. At the time again, the upper part of the body, the muscles present in them used to again relax and expand. When they expand, their body is pushed forward. So in this way, the rings of muscles that are present in the body of the earthworm helps in the movement of the earthworm forward. Now, the next insect is snail. The snail used to have muscular feet or muscular structure at the down portion of their body which are in contact with the ground surface. These muscles used to have a rhythmic movement, a contraction and expansion used to occur in this area also. This regular contraction and expansion of the muscular fluid that is present at the down portion of the snail which are in contact with the ground surface used to help the snail to move forward. So in this case, up to the portion that we study, that is, the movement in human being, the movement in earthworm, and the movement in the snails, they are caused by the contraction and expansion of the muscles that are present in particular parts of the body. The next insect is the cockroach. We are seeing the front part of their body. The front part of their body contains muscles. Some of the muscles are attached with the legs, while some muscles are attached with the wings. The muscles that are attached with the wings, we used to call it as the breast muscle. 
The contraction and the expansion of these breast muscles help in the movement of the wings and help the cocos to fly. While the muscles that are attached to the legs, when they contract and expand, they usually help in the movement of their leg. And this movement of the leg helps the cocos to walk on the surface on which they are present. So in this way, the cocos used to move. Now, let us see about the movements that is caused in case of the birds. Birds have developed certain adaptations in their body so that they can feed and they can develop the habit that they have. The forelimb, forelimb means the hand or the leg portion which is in the front. When we say limbs, our hand is also a limb, our leg is also a limb. The hand we call it as a forelimb, the leg we call it as a hind limb. In case of the bird, the hind limb is present as a leg itself while the forelimb is modified into wings for flying. Above that, in order to fly, they, have, they should have a light body. In order to have a light body, the bones that are present inside the birds, they are hollow. Inside the bones, there is empty space. These hollow bones that is present inside the birds make the body of the birds light. So, the two adaptations that are found in the bird which helps in your movement is the modification of the forelimb to the wings so that they can fly and the presence of the leg. The contraction and the expansion of the muscles that are attached with the leg helps the bird to move, to walk on the ground. While the contraction and expansion of the muscles that are attached with the wing helps the, help them to flutter their wing and fly. Above that, they have hollow bones which make their body light and helps them to fly. So in this way, the movement is called in case of the bird. Now, let us come to the movement in case of the fish. Fish is a very common element that we see in our day to day life. Some adaptation features that is developed in the fish for moving is the presence of a streamlined body. Streamlined body means having pointed end at both sides. So this streamlined body helps the fish to move in the water easily. Above that, the body of the fish used to have fins and tails. The movement of these fins and tails help the body of the fish to move forward. Above that, when they move forward, their body used to move sideways. When the head portion of the fish move in one side, the tail portion will move in the other side. This movement is caused by the muscles that is present in them. So, the movement of the muscles in two opposite directions. The movement of the muscles present in the head and the movement of the muscles present in the tail when they move in two opposite directions and when the fins and the tails flatter in the water at the time the fins used to move forward. So one of the most important features that is present in the fins for the which cause which help in their movement easily is the presence of streamlined body, the presence of fin and the presence of tail. Above this, the movement of the muscles present in the head and the tail portion in two different directions help the fish to move easily in water. Now, the last organism that is included in this chapter is the snake. The snake have a long bone inside their body and presence of rough muscles in them. The rough muscles that is in contact with the surface of the ground used to develop a contraction and expansion. This contraction and expansion above that, they used to develop a pressure on the ground. The contraction and the expansion and the pressure on the ground used to help in pushing their body forwards and in this way, the snake used to move forward. So, these are the different types of movements that are caused in different animals. So, in today's class, we had studied the movement in case of the human being by the hollow muscles, the movement of earthworm, the movement in case of cockroach, the movement in case of fish, the movement in case of birds, the movement in case of snail, and the movement in case of snake. So these are the things that we had studied in today's class. So we are going to wind up today's class. In the next class, we will take up a new chapter. Thank you dear students.